and so Rosanne. And I'm work, uh, my work is in multilingual bio NLP, an intersection between uh, linguistics and uh, biomedical field. So um, recently we have uh, seen so many papers and especially in conferences like uh, ACL, NACL, uh, talking a lot about making science multilingual and trying to uh, reach other um, populations. So uh, we can see that at least in two papers in 2018 in Nature, uh, they talked about uh, multilingual databases, especially um, the influence of Chinese articles that people are not looking at the moment and they are producing a lot and we have no idea, maybe we are doing the same thing because we don't speak Chinese, unfortunately. But uh, we can see that uh, technology can play an important role in this case. So um, this is uh, a, a study for, from Aureli with um, clinical NLP in languages that are not English. So we can see that French, uh, German, and uh, Chinese are constantly uh, increasing. And this is um, a search from Zika virus in a Latin American database that includes also Medline. So we can see that most of them are English, but we also have Spanish and Portuguese. And uh, what makes it interesting is that if you look at the Spanish and Portuguese articles, they relate more about the social impact and the uh, regional characteristics than the English ones. For example, the English ones are looking more at uh, cancer uh, applications for, of the Zika virus. Uh, meanwhile, in Brazil, uh, we are talking about how to prevent the spread and more about uh, epidemiolo epidemiologic analysis. So I don't know why these colors are like this, but um, WNT is the main conference for machine translation. So we can see that, um, for instance, here, we can see that uh, the ARC system performs better than the reference in the blind judgment. So we can possibly say that um, uh, automatic translation is in pair with human translation for this domain. So uh, we may not get completely uh, fluent and perfect translation, but we can get usable translation and that may be enough for uh, sharing knowledge and uh, making science available for people that cannot speak English, as most of Brazilian doctors, I would say. So, uh, and the other topic is annotation transfer, which is uh, quite recent. So uh, there are two papers, uh, both of them from Spain, when, where they try to uh, get annotations from English and uh, port them to Spanish or other languages. So uh, most of the, um, the study, studies in the past of in bio NLP were made in English because probably everyone speaks English, but there were data sets available. So if we make data sets available in other languages, they might attract uh, the attention of the people. So by applying annotation transfer, we can create uh, data sets in a uh, not that um, costly way of annotating from scratch. So this is an example with European languages. So this is the mantra corpus, which is the pretty much the only uh, multi-language corpus. So we can see that, um, that these annotations uh, can be um, easily um, derived to the Portuguese or to the uh, French just using word alignments that are like 20 years old and we can leverage from that. So it works very well for uh, Indo-European uh, languages, but if we look at Asian languages, it might be a way more harder, but Chinese is 
the leading uh, language uh, at the moment. So um, we need to pay attention on that also. So this I try to do. I'm not sure if this is a good translation. Is it a reasonable translation in Japanese? Is it understandable? Are the mappings correct? <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So <laughs> I don't. Know. So that's the point. We need uh, to uh, use automatic translation, and if we can, uh, like crowdsource annotations, get annotations from English, transfer to another language, and people just check is it okay or not. If it's not, what's the correction that I need to make? Instead of annotating everything from scratch, so we need to build upon something that already exists. So um, that's my proposal. So, and this, I have this, does anyone speak Chinese? What is the correct translation for, for neural cell? Uh, but, okay. <laughs> so that's the thing that you can, we need to understand, not, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to convey the message. So the proposal is to validate if the translation can convey the message and if there is some uh, incorrect, uh, it's this incorrect uh, terminology, just correct that terminology and that's it. Not do a fine uh, revision and uh, then apply the methods that already exist for uh, annotation transfer and then check if the annotation was uh, correctly transferred. So ideally a way that I thought about correcting annotations was that if the annotation is incorrectly aligned just move the annotation inside the text and if the annotation is missing we would have like one in English and the other one in the target language, you just drag and drop and then you just tra manually transfer the, the annotation. So the idea is to make things simple. We can use uh, improve uh, on uh, text A, A and build something upon that. So some of the things may overlap with uh, other participants so we can maybe talk about how to make things um, reusable. So thank you for your time and I'm open to questions.